Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today this is a voice recording to make a setup. Uh, I've seen people asked. This is actually a very simple thing. But uh, anyway, so let's start. So here we are in Blender. I already appended this snake model from Blender Swap. You can download it for free from the link in the description. I'm also going to use Geometry Nodes presets, which you can download for free from the link in the description. Uh, there's uh, nothing really special in this tutorial. Actually, I think the, the only key point is that how you interpret uh, the original animation. Uh, I hope you can firstly understand that you need a curve. For example, let's create a Bezier curve, make that uh, very large. And uh, once you have the curve being made, you can make a curve modifier so that this snake can be deformed along this curve, as you can see like this. And by moving this snake on the y-axis, you can see this snake is moving. This is a very classic example of how curve modifier uh, can work. As I want to do this more procedurally, I'm going to use the geometry nodes. And also I think there is a problem that cannot be solved with curve modifier. But uh, anyway, so uh, let's start with an object to hold the geometry node tree. You can set the geometry node tree on this snake directly, but um, it's just not my personal preference that I usually don't do yet. Okay, so uh, we can start with a simple curve, or let's uh, start with um, path, for example, and I'm just going to rotate it uh, to make that top. Uh, um, this is awkward. Uh, let's model that a little bit. Uh, maybe just uh, it can be any curve. I just want to get a shape so that you can understand the effect of it. And I'm going to create a kind of a helical constructor, a uh, helical structure. I've talked about helical connections in the past. Uh, it's basically just the curve to mesh. And you can see their radius and the tilt, which is just the set curve radius, set curve tilt. The only issue is that in this profile curve, you are going to have a triplet. So that's why you can see actually a three curve expanded from this single curve. Okay. And uh, yes, we are basically using like a one node to replace about five nodes or more. But this is very straightforward. And what we're going to do is just to uh, tilt it. <coughs> Let's take a float range. This float range uh, can be thought as a way of working on the index so that uh, for every point you can turn some degree of it. So let's plug these uh, values into the tilt. Uh, let's ignore this nervous path since we no longer need that. Okay, uh, the angle is not large enough so you can make that make the step size maybe four, then you get this kind of whatever results. You can tweak it by yourself, or sometimes you can use the stop modes. Let's take a TAU, which means two pi. This is also a method. Um, the difference between these two are not very important in this particular tutorial, since this curve isn't really moving. Uh, what we are going to actually do is actually to rotate this curve. So what you can see is that I'm adding this tilt, so then you get a general rotation. And basically this animation is already done. The rest is about how to make the snake onto uh, this curve, just like a curve modifier. And we basically use uh, curve deformer. It was uh, being said many times by developers that they are going to implement this in geometry nodes since like 3.1, but now we are at 4.1. They still 
didn't do so. But uh, anyway, and uh, this is basically just a curve modifier, but it works for multiple instances and uh, have many other functions. So we need the curves as a guidance and uh, we need uh, the geometry which is to be deformed. But there is an issue that uh, I have three curves but I only have one geometry so I'm going to instance geometry for each curve. So now I have three snakes, they look kind of very ugly. This is because I need to switch that to the y-axis. So now I have this whatever stuff, we're going to skate that down. And then I have these three snakes. And if I play this animation of this uh, rotation, then you can see this animation is already being done. Let's take a time note. So now if I play this animation, you can see these snakes is rotating. Uh, you can exaggerate it, make the radius, uh, make the uh, stop size larger, so you get whatever this kind of effect. Actually, this is really it. Yes. But there is also one problem that you realize that uh, uh, this curve deformer is basically working based on the sample curve node in which you are uh, displacing the original mesh based on the position tangent normal. And because of the tangent normal is arbitrarily set in Blender for these curves by default. That's why you get these kind of snakes always pointing outside the center point in this case. Uh, it looks kind of very bizarre and not really ideal in our case. So we are going to set the curve normal. We have a set curve normal node. And obviously it's not a minimum twist. We you can switch that to Z up and immediately you have some effect, but you also realize there is a kind of artifact because of the twisting functionality. Then what you can try is try to use the free mode so that uh, these snakes are supposed to actually pointing upwards. And uh, um, you also have to tilt a little bit, maybe 90 degree to make it work. Then yeah, it looks kind of weird. I don't actually know why, but uh, um, oh, I think it's because um, It's because that this is tilting down, so the curve is being distorted. Uh, basically, tweak with these values and uh, modify our shapes to make it uh, working normally. So now you have this effect, but you realize that uh, this part of segment is being distorted, and. Uh, so that it looks kind of weird compared to the ZUP method. Okay. So we are going to fix that. To fix it is a little bit brutal. We basically just uh, set a two different kind of normal based on the position along with this spline. Let's take a spline parameter. And I'm going to use this uh, factor as a way to mix different vector for its alignment. So one is uh, for, uh, taking up, but the other is uh, facing Y. So now if we look at that, uh, then you can see we have nice thick parts and uh, we have nice facing upwards part. And then you basically just plug that into the factor and it actually works already. And uh, the major advantage is that we do not have the previous artifact as the Z-up. But anyway, and yeah, basically this is yet. Um, there are lots of customization that you can potentially do, but I'm not going to deal with them since they are very specific to the setup. 
So actually, it's not um, many nodes or things. And uh, again, the whole point is that how you can break down the original animation and then come up with uh, tools and methods to solve your problems. So this is it. I hope you enjoy this video. I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.